Howdy. So we have a fun episode today. We are going to talk about some of the fan art that I actually got, and I love getting mail. So this is actually going to be fun. We are going to talk about the lies that you tell yourself that cost you money. So I do not want to hold you up too much longer because we got to get to a lot of this stuff right now because so many things have been happening around here. And I think it's about time to make this thing happen. All right, everybody. See you back in like 30 seconds. Welcome back, everybody. So first off, I have to say that for those of you who love the show and like the support, I actually love getting mail. And one of the pieces of mail that I received from one of my lovely listeners, they actually drew this. Can you see this? Like, they actually got me, did this in Microsoft Paint, and I appreciate it. Look at Look at this. Look at this level of detail. They even gave me candy. They got my little YouTube plaque. I don't have one yet, but I'm hoping to get there. And they even have my uh, my diploma in the background with the mug. See the mug? And then they have the, like the little about that wallet thing. So first up, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much, Soros, for this lovely artwork. I'll make sure to have this posted somewhere in the background so that you can forever see this. If you guys ever want to send me some mail, you can send it to get my uh, additional mail because I actually got some more mail. It's great. I love going to the mailbox to find a mail. Um, so if you want to send me mail, you can go to P.O. Box 1877 Clinton, Maryland 20735. Let me make sure I can put that up there so you guys can see this. You know, it's just something about getting mail that you know, it's almost like a lost art of sending mail. And I have to say that I really appreciate the art. Uh, send mail to, I just want to make sure that you all have the opportunity to send me something because, you know, getting stuff in the mail is uh, it's important. It's just a little vibe, you know, um, that you get. And it gives me a little bit of joy. And it does show that I'm actually adding impact. And I love for you to actually kind of post, you know, what do you like about the show? Um, Because this is actually kicking off season four of the show. And I've been doing it since 2020. And it's coming up. Even though season four is just that, you know, season one, you started off in 2020. So one, two, three, four, you get it. Um, And I think I'm trying to do roughly about... 56 to 57 episodes a season. So for those of you who are new, welcome to the show. For those of you who have been here for a while, I greatly appreciate you for sticking around because we have a lot of fun on the show and we have a lot of great things to talk about. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So if you want to send me mail, go ahead and send me mail right down below on screen. All right. So this is the second piece of mail because I want I want to start this off. Let me get some some music here. So it's me open up some mail. What do you guys think? I need to figure out something like some good some good music that I could play. I think I need to do, get download some more music. All right. So for this next piece of mail, I actually got this as a book. So let me open this up. This is a unboxing, you guys. So got some mail. Oh, look at this lovely packaging, by the way. It's called the Financial Mommies. So, and I actually did an interview. So this interview will be dropping. The interview for this particular uh, book that I did with her is actually coming out um, next week. So stay tuned, stay locked in if you haven't liked the show already, just because you like the lovely hosts. 
So go ahead on and uh, give me a like. And if you haven't already, so go ahead on and subscribe because this is a lot of work. And my people don't tell you all that. So you see all these edits that other people do for their 14 minute shows and whatnot. It's a lot to do. And I know it looks like I'm sweating. I just put on some, uh, what do they call it cocoa butter? No, shea butter. Okay. So this is the book that I got. It was called Girl Boss Up and Lead, which is leverage, alleviate, accelerate, and dominate. So, oh, uh, and I got a, she gave me a book, a magnet bookmark. Look at this, you guys. Look at this. See, LaShonda Harmon, the financial mommy, CEO, and financial strategist. Okay. Like, look, this is great. And you know, she likes to drink because she knows I like to drink too. Look at this wine bottle. And they're even talking about wine pairings, appetizers, cheese and mild. Cheese sharp, pasta red sauce, pasta wine sauce. Like, she, I might have to try some of these, okay? Which one of these y'all think I should do? I don't know. But either way, this is amazing. So, for those of you who are just joining in, I have to say, like, yo, this, I can't believe it. Um, this is so great. Hey, Sir Royce, you're actually here. Yes, your masterpiece is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see if I get you a round of applause here. Because I, I have to say, this was great art. I love the new art. All right, and let's see what else she got in here. Oh, she even got me like some money moves stuff that I can actually do. So she gave me some paperwork to do, some homework. Hey, you know, when you're a, a kid and you always talk about like doing your artwork and all that fun stuff or doing the homework, you hated it as a kid. Like, why am I doing extra work when... I could be, uh, you know, doing it myself or being out and about. Man, this book is amazing. Like, it's all glossy and stuff. She got the gloss finish. Like, you can actually read what's on my screen based on what I'm showing you guys. So, you know, empowering, empowered women empower women. Okay. Empowered women empower women. As you begin to pour through the pages of this book, not only will you read how powerful each of these women are, you'll experience a greater sense of your own empowerment. So powerful. Just right in there. All right. So this whole show, this particular episode, I wanted to kick off season four to talk about. Well, first off, no, before I even get into that, I just want to say thank you. Okay. Thank you for everybody that's been rocking with me uh, since season one. And that for those of you who are just finding me out and going back and listening to those old episodes, I greatly appreciate you. Um, and Sororis, I can't thank you enough for the artwork. It's been amazing. I definitely, I want to put this on my fridge, but I want to make sure that I put this. Hey, you guys even look like me. Look, look, look at the little head, like the hairstyle you got me up in there. So cool. Um, so what I want to do is try to figure out a way to engage everybody. I think this is, I love getting mail. So please send me mail if you want to, uh, Vern, I know you, you're famous for getting your mail and it's amazing, uh, to see how you actually open up your mail. I laugh every time. It's like you, you your joy, you just, it's amazing. Um, so Going through that all, this whole show is talking about lying to yourself and how it costs you money. And what I want to do is open that up a little bit. What do you think, what do you lie to yourself about? I want you to take a moment right now to think about what do you lie to yourself about? Do you lie to yourself about the way you feel? Do you lie to yourself um how you, you know, view the world. How are you coping with the things that you see in the news? How you feel, you know, your partner is there to support you and that you're not feeling the way how you used to, but people can sense it. So how do you manage, you know, dealing with such things? And 
this is what I want to open it up to everybody here. Because as I'm going through these episodes for season four, I'm going to lean heavy. I'm telling you, I'm leaning heavy into your habits. Like, why is it that you do what you do? Why? And also provide you some of the books that are necessary or that I feel that I've read that's been helpful in building habits. So the first book that I want to recommend kind of wish I had it all together, don't you? But the book that I want to recommend here, I reference a lot, is The Power of Habit. If you haven't seen this book or read this book yet, um, I highly recommend to get this book. This book right here actually talks about, you know, what are your triggers? What are your cues? How to get this thing started? But then you're like, well, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to be a better person. I'm trying to be a better husband. I'm trying to be a better wife. I'm trying to be a better boyfriend. I'm trying to be a better dater just to date people. I'm trying to be a better people's person. So let's change that mindset to I'm trying, I'm training to be a better husband. I'm training to be the husband. I'm training to be the wife. I'm training to be a um, a great driver. I'm training to not smoke. I'm training to eat healthy. I'm training to be the best that I can be. How about that? Because, you know, when it comes to training, think about it. Your training is a set of habits already. Just saying the word training. I want you to type in the word training right now inside the chat. Type in training. The reason why I say I want you to type in training is because you got to take ownership of what it is that you're trying to train for. So as you type in training, type in what you want to train for. Okay. What do you feel that's in your life right now that's lacking? I want to start walking people right now live. Why not? Okay. So you're training to be better. But what are you training to to, to be better at what? So T Miles, you say training. All right. Let's take it a little deeper. What are you training to be better at? Because one of the things about training is one thing to say it, but then to do it. And this is one of the reasons why I say that you can actually change your habits in less than 30 eight seconds. I just do a random number, but really you can change it in one second. But 38 seconds is the reason why I say that it takes that long to train. And what you're training for is the mind. When it comes to training, you're training your body to listen to your mind. Okay. You're submitting your body to your mind and to be submissive is very hard for your body. Your body naturally just wants to lay down, have a great time. Like, hey, everything's taken care of. I don't need to run out and hunt. I don't need to run out and get some water. I don't need to run out to get, you know, the taco from Taco Bell. You're training your body to go against what it's comfortably doing. Okay. So, Vern, you said that you want to train to become a, uh, an author. Okay. So for the sake of time, and because I don't have you up here with me, let's walk this through. You can either A, try to be an author, which means that, oh, yeah, I write a little bit. Then I'm going out and party. I'm going to travel or whatever. Like, oh, yeah, I do got that book. That's what we're writing. But are you really training or are you trying? Okay. Now, Training. When you're training to be an author, you looking at what authors do. You taking that time out of your day to focus on what you need to do to be an author, which means either A, you spend an, at least one hour a day or maybe even 20 minutes. We talked about the power of 1% already on this show. The power of 1% will take you a lot further than where you are today because you actually took that 20 minutes out of your day, which is 1% of that day. To actually read a book, analyze 
uh, the book you read, or even a passage, you took a class, you um, take in that five minutes out of those 20 minutes to actually write a small passage. Doesn't matter what it is. And then you're constantly studying. This is training. When you talk about being a good basketball player, and everybody used basketball as a reference because it's a lot easier to visually see or even a sports player. Like they always talk about Michael Jordan always making all these shots during practice. When he's making these shots, he's training to be a winner at basketball. So when you say you're training to be what? That means that that level of habits that you have to create is so important. And pretty much it is the catalyst to take you to that next level, to be that author, to be X. Okay. So being that author, now we can either do deeper dives. What have you done so far or what habits have you already generated that will be part of your training so that you can be a, a better author? I'd like to hear what you have to say, Vern. Put that in the chat. All right, so we got T. Miles in here. So you're training to keep up with chores. Hey, I, 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 I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Training up to these chores, I mean, man. Like, for what I did for my chores, okay, this is what I did. The train for chores is a set a day, one day out the week, where I'm doing a full sweep. I'm talking about like vacuuming behind sofas and couches that I haven't vacuumed before in a while. Like I haven't seen the back of these things in since the prior week, but you know, you can see the difference in between training versus actually trying. You want to have a clean place, but you're not there yet. And what does it cost you to try? Okay. When it comes to trying, I've been there. I'm, in a sense, I was trying to be a better podcaster because I say I'm trying because I wasn't training. I wasn't here giving you guys week after week everything you needed or some type of entertainment or some type of information that will take you to that next level. My job is to make you a better uh, habit. So I was actually thinking about calling myself a habit trainer. Okay, because it would actually help take you take me to the next level to help you go to that next level, that next rung to help you not lose the funding or the funds that you require to live the life that you desire. Okay. So you even said training to be a top shelf trader. Okay. A top shelf trader. That goes back to what I was saying. What are those 20 minutes that you're spending out of every day? to become a top shelf trainer. Now, if you go beyond that 20, that 20 minutes a day, you're now reaching into that 1%. You talking about being a trader? Okay, what 20 minutes, what chat? How about this? Jot into the chat right now, what are the top two stocks that you're actually looking into? And then explain like why? Because when it comes to a trainer, who's actually studying this stuff, you can't, you can tell the person anything that they want to. Like, say if uh, you go to the gym and you tell this person, okay, they, you see them lifting like a five pound weight or whatever, but yet they, this big bulky person and they lifting up these five pound weights or whatever. You initial thought is to kind of like shun them. Like why are they lifting these small weights? But you can actually go in and actually reach out to them and say like, Hey, what is it that you're training for? Because some people are training to tone up. Some people train to bulk up. There's different sub-levels or sub-tiers inside the weightlifting game. So, so what Steve Miles was saying is that right now she's doing the, the spy and QQQ, heavily traded so it moves enough to make money consistently. Perfect. So how many hours are you spending on this? Are you spending that 20 minutes? Like I said, at least a day, every day to make sure you got what you want and that you make sure that you get what you need. And this is one of the reasons why I always say that it's tough to sit around and just think it's okay 
to be just an everyday person. There's too much happening right now in the world. So you want to build up these small skills, these small habits to take you, um, that will take you to the next level. Now, one of the things that, um, I'm going to read a small passage here that was talking about trying versus training. And it starts off really well because I was reading this book, just I finished this book already, but I wanted to share this with you all. They say people can have the same goals yet get vastly different results. No married couple starts out saying, we're just hoping to endure the next 50 years. We may hate each other. Um, we may we may hate each other the whole time, but it is but it's fine as long as we don't get divorced. No, every marriage begins with the same goal. We want to be happily married forever, but half of the marriages end in divorce. No guy ends his high school sports career thinking in 20 years, I would love to have high cholesterol and maybe even pre-diabetes. No, every guy assumes he's going to be able to see at least one ad in his 40s, but about half of middle-aged men in the U.S. are overweight or obese. And that's a lot to say. So when it comes to trying versus training, you already put it in your mindset. Like, this is what winners do. Triers aren't winning. Okay? You can try all you want to, but you're not going to win. You must train. So, Ganya, you say you're training to be an entrepreneur. Okay. I know you've been working hard because you and I, we have some chats. And so to be an entrepreneur requires a lot of dedication. It's not an overnight success. But you did wake up and somebody planted a seed with you to say, hey, I see something in you. Or you saw something that was like totally could be you in your lifetime. And you're not giving up to make it happen, which means that you're training no matter what it is. You're going through the storms. You're learning. You're reaching out to people. You're getting the results that you want. You're reaching out to the people that you need. Okay. Now, to be an entrepreneur is one thing. But most people will tell you, just go head on, find a customer who um, who needs something. Everybody needs something. Everybody wants to make their life easy. They want to make their life um, feel fulfilled. They want entertainment. They want excitement. Can you provide that for them? That is something that people will spend money on. And usually they say, find your customer first before you even decide to do the product because you need to find a need. You can have 10,000 awesome, amazing designer shirts. You could design them all you want to. You can put on shirts. I actually do want to put this on a shirt. You can put a lot of shirts with this on it, right? But if nobody wants it, you don't have even one customer. Now you got a lot of product. So how are you going to move it? And I'm just using shirts because it's an easy move. It's so simple to create now that you can do drop shipping with them. But ultimately, if you want to make a million dollars, you got to solve a million dollar problem. It's plain and simple. So depending on the market that you're going for, you need to know what is the demand for that product. Okay. I don't know everything. I'm just saying from stuff that I've witnessed and experienced. So this is it. So you spend hours second guessing yourself too much. Mm. Mm, that's powerful. Because a lot of times we are in our way. From allowing ourselves to be great in the places that we need to succeed. We sit around and just think that, you know, life is, is peachy. Um, or it's just too difficult. Or you're there's you don't have how can I say 
and this is one of the things that I, I go back and forth on is a lot of people out here have great ideas, but don't know how to execute them. And what they're looking for is the ability to um, proceed and succeed in their their lives. But because they constantly analyzing, there's so much information out here and it's called analysis paralysis, which means that you're looking at five or six different resources to tell you different things. And then you're trying to figure out, okay, well, it's so much meat, it's so little bone. Where they say eat all the meat and spout the bones, but it's so much information out there. Where do you start? And that's the key. Where do you start? And because a lot of people have so many different gurus that they follow or so many specialists that are out there, you need to find the one that speaks to you and most relatable to you. Because, like I say, personal finance is personal business is business personal. The reason why I'm saying business is business personal, like you having a candy shop that makes those Laffy Taffies or where they got the little spinel things or whatever, where they making the candy, they can teach you how to make a Laffy Taffy, but they can't teach you how to make a sucker. You know what I'm saying? Because if you want to learn how to make Laffy Taffies, then you follow the Laffy Taffy guy. Just that one guy. Master that process before you move on. It's like those apprentices, like apprenticeship is lost. I have to say it's almost like a lost art nowadays. And the only profession that I've seen that requires such longevity of learning something is the plumbing industry. You start off as an apprentice and you don't become a regular person or uh, a master at it until you've been in there for 10 years. Now, what job out there are people staying at for 10 years just to kind of call themselves a master at something? There aren't that many. So when it comes to looking at um, these different gurus or uh, specialists, you need to understand like what they're doing is best for them. I'll give you a perfect example. Okay. So my mom cooks macaroni and cheese one way. And I never question like how she does macaroni and cheese. Like, all right, I'm make macaroni and cheese. I follow her way. She used three or four cheeses and um, I get a decent macaroni and cheese dish. Right? So I'll constantly use that until I can perfect it and start making my own. Cool. Now I can make my, 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 my own macaroni and cheese following my mom's recipe. Now, say if I look at Paula Dean, you know, she loves her butter. She putting a lot of butter in that mac and cheese. But her style is a little different. So then you become an apprentice for that in learning how she makes hers. Now, the easiest thing and one of the things that a lot of people do nowadays is just kind of give you the recipe. They give you some of the instructions or whatever, massage it all together, and it should look like theirs. But does it taste like theirs? And they try their best because they massage it a little bit to make it a little bit more appealing. And some people don't measure at all. That's where it comes to the trying out phase. Ooh, I like that now. Okay. So when it comes to trying, have you ever just like see somebody like, you know, they trying out a recipe? Hey, I'm going a, I'm to a try this recipe out right quick. It don't taste good. Think about that when you, the next time you say you want to try out uh, a different diet or try something, okay? Versus your training. When you say you're training to be a better chef, to be a better cook where everybody will actually eat it, you actually put a little bit more effort into it. You'll watch your shows like Nailed It. I love Nailed It. Okay. Uh, and or like Top Shelf not top shelf, top chef. And you actually watching it and you feel like, man, how do they get so good? How do they get on the show? I can cook better than them. They train. Okay. The difference between the top chef show versus nailed it. 
you can see the difference. You can see the quality in the work. You can see the time differences as well, that they are producing well beyond um, a better quality product, a better product uh, quality of food, and they've taken their time to do it right. So um, one of the things is that, you remember, you're talking about uh, trying versus trading. And that's one of the amazing things we got to do. All right. So it's about the half hour time. Y'all know what time it is. Man, it's been a while, but here we go. It's time for drinks. Make sure y'all got y'all drinks because we're going to be back in 30 seconds. See what we got. All right, y'all know what I'm drinking. Dude. So this this drink, I like it because it comes with like a little hat from Mexico. And this is Resposado. All right, so with this Resposado, it's a long day, okay? I think I need this. I'm not sure about you guys. What I want to do One door shot to what uh, life is. Okay. So first off, what are what are you guys drinking out there? Okay, I just want to hear what you guys drinking. I got some water. We got some wine for the night. What do we got. All right, you just. <laughs> hey, Kate is dancing. All right. Hey, look, Kaden, this for you. Get your little little bear, okay? All right. So, hey, there you go. You do need grass wine. It's Wednesday. I mean, Thursday. I used to be on the All right. So, all right. For this shot, I want to hold this up to all of you who are out there who just made the dedication and made it this far to say, you know what? We're going to try. I mean, we're going to train, not try, okay? We're going to train to be better people, better. Um, we're going to train to be a chef. We're going to train to be a day trader. We're going to train for that million dollar entrepreneurship. Hey, putting it out there in the universe. And I want you guys to drink to that, okay? One, two, three. Oof. It's been a while. So now that we've got that out the way and we've already gotten to try versus training, I think... Time to talk about what's ahead, because I'm going to keep this pretty short and spend some time with you all, because it hasn't I haven't been on a live show in a while, and I owe that to you. And I just want to say thank you all for supporting me through this process. Um, season four, I have 13 episodes going back to back. Like I said, the first episode coming out this Tuesday is with the financial mommies, uh, LaShondra Harmon. So this one is going to be her episode. Um, and I'll do another flashback to that uh, to kind of talk about it. I'm going to read through some of it and just kind of give you guys some feedback on what I think about it next week. Um, I am changing the show from Wednesdays to Thursdays at 8 o'clock, mostly because it's been um, it's just kind of easier for me so that we can spend this time together and be a little intimate because it seemed like Wednesdays was really tough uh, because Wednesdays were tough because I'm competing against a lot of Bible studies. A lot of Bible studies were on Wednesdays, a lot of um, other events happening, and it was just getting too much for the things that I wanted to be part of. 
uh, during that same time frame. But before we go, I did do a survey. And I did a survey on what you guys really wanted to see. But I want to still know if it's true. Do you guys still want to see um, real estate? Do you guys want me to put out more information about real estate? If you say yes in the chat, it's not that many of you. Uh, so if you put in yes, I'll go ahead on and do a breakdown right quick of um, of some ways to actually get some funding for your real estate. There's a couple grants out there as well. Matter of fact, I could talk about grants. So we, there's some grants that came out for those of you who are looking to be an entrepreneur. You can even have an idea. Uh, so let me know. Do you want me to talk about more about entrepreneurship? Do you want me to talk about um, real estate? What do you got? What is, what's on your mind right now financially? So, I mean, I can do a deep dive in anything. Just let me know. What do you guys want to talk about? Because this last half hour is really for you guys. Um, you know, I've researched this all the time. I'm always training to become well-rounded in financial habits, financial stories. And one of the things I am training to be is a better storyteller. So I'm listening and watching different comedians and see how they tell their stories by like gaps and so forth. Um, let me, so y'all saying yes, but I'm trying to think of like, can y'all be specific? Cause there's a delay from you guys chat and then from the time I actually get to see it. So I want to make sure that I have um, the right info. So what do you guys want me to go over? Um, grants for entrepreneurship just to get started. For those of you who want to get um, funding for your ideas, or do you want real estate grants and kind of talk about that? And I can talk about that for like another 10 to 15 minutes. But again, this show is for you. Um, or do you guys want me to talk about podcast stuff? Because I can talk about podcast stuff all day. All right. So we got one for entrepreneurship. Okay. Let me grab my notes. Uh, which can we start soon? Mm, that's a good question. So which business I'll take that as your question, T Miles. Like, what question? Like, what business should you start soon, or can you start soon? Is that the question? Like I said, there's a delay, so just kind of, kind of let me know a little bit uh, what it is. Okay, let's see what you got. Uh, yes, real estate author. Okay, um, let's see. The funny thing is, all right, I'm going to leave this with a caveat. Okay, of course, this is for educational purposes only. So when it comes to starting a business or real estate, um, getting into real estate is actually pretty easy. It's the same as... Uh, uh, entrepreneurship. The reason why I say it's easy because I just did it. Um, I just purchased my first uh, multifamily and also obviously started this business. But if I were to do it again, I could do it a lot faster than I did the first time around. And that's the reason why it's like, you know, when you do something the first time, this is why it's called training. You you train, you do your best and get to where you at. So that the second time around, it's a lot easier. Okay. So um, so purchasing a boring business, that would actually be pretty cool. All right. Let's see. I got a couple, couple ideas here. Avoid expenses, mistakes, nope. Home buying, watch later, grants. Okay. So I have a lot of shortcuts here that I want to share. I'm going to present my desktop. Oh yeah. I like this one. That's for neighborhood works. Um, grants, 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 business contract, Maryland housing. That's right. I did a lot of research on housing, by the way. Um, 
Oh, I don't want to move this stuff out the way. I had a really good one. Oh, this is the one. Okay, I'm about to share my screen right quick so you guys can see it. And present screen. Just give me a moment. And for those of you who are listening on Spotify and Apple and so forth, I'm actually just sharing my screen so that you can all see. Now, some of the folks, um, though you might be audio part of this and strictly audio, I just want to say that I apologize. But if you're part of the live shows, this is what you get. I am doing my best here to support everybody. Okay, so right here is something called Neighborhood Works America. And I kind of wish I could move it. So let's, uh, um, in Neighborhood Works America, so I'm doing Maryland because it's just kind of a fun state. And they already talk about total investments, total housing, uh, money leverage, the grants, and so forth. So they talk about the impact for these different areas. So this is called Neighborhood, uh, Neighborhood Works America. And if you just type in neighborhoodworks.org, you can actually type in your state down below or just select the state. Uh, somebody give me a state in the chat, like where you're from, so I can um, go ahead on and throw some ideas up there. Because then you can look at the different grants that are available for you when you come to looking for your homes. Because what, one of the things that they do talk about here is like uh, homes and finances, which is having a safe, decent and affordable place that uh, to live allows people to put down roots and communities to grow, uh, to grow strong. It also gives homeowners and renters alike the stability to keep their children in school, anticipate financial expenses, and get to know their neighbors. Okay. So we're doing VA. All right, let's see what we got in here. Let's change this on down to Virginia. You see search. All right. So this is a network here. Okay. So you're seeking help on buying a home and down payment assistance, re relief, or more. Um, use our network directory for neighborhood works. Network organization near you by typing in your address below. So the cool thing about having, I'm not even sure why would they do that. We just said Virginia, but whatever. The cool thing about having um, things in Virginia or any city or state for that matter is that you can go out here and reach out to these people and be like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I need assistance. Okay. I need to get some stuff done. The name of the site is neighborhoodworks.org. Okay. It's neighborhood in, I mean, I'm sorry, not neighborhood works, neighborworks.org. Let's see if I can put that in the chat for you. Yes, I can. Sweet. So you can um, actually search for grants that are in locally in your area. Now, this actually helps out. Oh, this is all the way in West Virginia. This site is actually pretty cool, like how to zoom out and zoom in. It's pretty nice. Now, this is just one site. Okay. The next site for HUD Homes, I think it's just called HUD. Uh, HUD.gov. HUD Home Store.gov. Now, this is another site. It's, um, it's called HUD.gov, HUD Homes. Now, some people be like, well, you can get a home for like $20. Damn. This is the site that they're talking about, okay? So if you want to get a house for like 10 bucks, you can come here and get it. Um, so you look at VA, you're looking at what people are bidding, okay? It's like $10 down to kind of get into the bid if you want to bid on this property. So they got a property case here. Um, well, let's read what it's about, okay? So these are the results. Uh, bid results, home. Let's go to home because I can always come back to this one. So what is this? Search for HUD home to purchase by doing one of the following. Click on the state and the map on the right. Click uh, click one of the HUD specialty uh, special program links below. Enter your details. So what is it? And these are the different special programs. They don't really explain what it is. 
you just kind of bid for a house. <laughs> it's like, do you want a house or not? And that's pretty much it. Uh, hey, what's going on, Deffrey Dad? What it do, sir? Marcus. Marcus in the building. Let me uh, give you some horns here, so You deserve it. <laughs> All right. So we're looking at some of these, uh, some of these homes right now because people are looking for real estate. I think it'll be fun. Um, so this one is just called HUD Homes. You can look up for properties and bid results and all this fun stuff, right? This is just one of many websites that are out there. Um, now let me go back. So you can do a property search for VA. We just clicked on Virginia. And so like, say this, let's go by price. Cause you know, we, we bought that wallet. So we want to go for, you know, El Cheapo because we can always fix it up later, right? Now, we don't want to go super cheap. You know what I'm saying? This looks nice. Look at that. Look at that. All right. It's a nice little place, but the, look at that acreage, though. You can throw something back there, right? What do they got? Look at that. Look at that. Just paint the walls a little bit. Just paint it white. See if I can board it up. Yeah. Just paint that white. Got some backsplash. They took out. <laughs> You can tell it used to be a um, dishwasher here, like a 18 inch dishwasher because the standard size for a dishwasher um, is about 18. You can get an 18 inch one here, but usually the standard size is 24 inch. So it looked like they had a dishwasher here, but they did a horrible job on the L shape. So you might got a little Reno for some renovations going on, but for the most part, it looks like a solid property. I mean, the sink, can be replaced or whatever. It's like 20 bucks. At least the tiling looks decent. And they looking for it's open to all bidders. It's four hours remaining. And this one is in Essex County. Two baths, two bath, built in 1975. Single family. 1.75 acres. Okay. And they only given it for one hundred eleven thousand dollars. That's the list price. I mean, I'm sure, and it's two hundred three k eligible. So, for those of you who don't know what two hundred three k means, that means it's like a it's like a building contract for the house after you purchase it. Okay, so that means that in FHA stands for uh, first home buyer. I think it's like FHA first. Home association or something like that. So in other words, you just it's your first time buying a home, and then it's two hundred three k, which means that they'll bundle this FHA and the two hundred three k into one lump loan, which means that it includes all the fixings and all that fun stuff. Nice and easy, and then you can get all the property conditions report and all that fun stuff. So you can get the lab report. All of this stuff is great. And obviously, the map look like it's not too far. Uh, from the place. Now, if you plan on renting it, look like you might just have to live there. I don't think you're going to be renting it out. That's a long drive somewhere. Look like you're going to be living there. But out of the way, you get two acres. They ain't that bad. So, and this is a company that uh, is currently assessing it. The listing broker, Apex, which they own it. Because remember, you hear a lot of people say, well, a lot of companies are going to be selling their properties. And the reason why they're trying to downsize is because they can get their money now and get out because of the interest rates are going up. And I believe next week the interest rates are going to go up 25 basis points. Now, you be like, well, what are you talking about basis points? Well, what do I mean by basis points? Because I like to, I don't like to, uh, you know, keep you guys in the dark. Here's what the basis point is. Basis point is 100, 100th of 1% used chiefly in expressing the differences in interest rates. So the treasury will be paying overall rate just 75, 100 basis points. In other words, it's just really like 0.75. Okay. It's not really that fancy. Let's pull up a image here. So if you just want to know what the basis points, this is it. But I like this chart here. It just makes life a little easy. So it's saying one basis point is 0.01%. So 
So when they say it's going to raise it 25 basis points, they really mean 0.25%. Okay. So I don't, you know, though we are about that wallet, I want you to be informed about that wallet. Okay. And that's what it is. This is another breakdown too. So when you hear all these fancy terms, they just use the jargon to make you feel like you don't know what you're talking about or you don't know what's happening. Instead of saying, oh, it went up 0.25%. Like, no, it just sounds a lot cooler. Okay. So, you know, and that's why a lot of people. So this is one of the websites that actually talks about as far as like how to get a home. Uh, this is the other website on finding grants for said home. There's another one. I got a um, got a couple grants here. Okay. So I'm going to open up this tab because you also talk about small businesses, right? So they were talking about small businesses because I believe Bluebird 009 was talking about small businesses. I'm going to get, I'm going to give you a two for on this one. Okay. So we talked about small businesses earlier. Everybody talking about small business, which pretty much runs the country. Now they were awarded 159 billion from federal government. Now this is for those of you who are tired of looking for grants. You actually just want to get a job. You want to go ahead on and get a government contract and knock it in. Okay. So since 2010, over the past 12 years, you're looking at just in 2022 alone, small business contracts were given $158 billion, Okay. That's what the B. Now, this is another shocking statistic is that the amount of small businesses that are winning these contracts have dropped more than half. Okay, it's only 58,000 small businesses right now that are getting all of this money. Which now brings to, if we keep looking at the stats here, look at how the businesses are broken down by racial makeup. Okay, women-owned businesses have dropped less than half. Hold up, why did it tell me it makes sense? They dropped about 900, okay? but they still making this money. Black owned has dropped about 500, give or take. Okay. Bear with me here. Rough numbers. And then Hispanic owned, it's a slow decline, but it's funny that these graphs aren't, they don't look, I guess you could say, uh, evenly paced, but it's like, it's, you see this huge drop of 500, but yet this one is about 700, but you don't see it's such a huge drop like how they did over here. It just doesn't make sense. Or even over here, like their graphs are off. It doesn't make sense. Um, but if you look at it, a small business each year of who's making all the money, okay? Woman-owned small business, that's what WOSB stands for. $62 billion. Just alone. Can you believe that? So if any ladies in here right now are listening and they're looking in to get into like contracts or whatever, look for government contracts. They are eating it up. Like really. Um, 8A, that is a different type of contract that you need to get uh, just to kind of say you're part of the government side of the house. Anybody can get those. And the SBA look like it is pretty small as well. I'm oh, sorry. No, women are up here. It's tiny. I think I read it wrong. So, all right. Thank you for stopping by. But yeah, so one of the things that you want to look into is start looking at some of these contracts and looking at the percentages that are given out. Okay. So you got the small business administration are giving out money. You got, um, and these are the companies that are actually investing into small business. And these are the percentages that they're investing in. So if you want to say, like, who is the highest person that's supporting small businesses, it's actually a small business administration. The least that you might get is the Department of Energy, but also it could be a specialized trait on what's happening there. So you want to look into those. Okay, I know I shared a lot of numbers. Um, I don't hopefully I don't 
lose anybody here, but this stuff is really important. Um, you all said that you are looking to, you know, not just um, what they call it, not just want to be trying people. You actually want to be doers, right? So now this one is called grants.gov. And we are talking about the grants and everything like that that are being passed around. And let me say, share this one. Okay. So grants.gov is another place that you can go to get some grants for your business. Now here they say, your team, your workplace, apply for a funding opportunity is easier and more efficient when your team collaborates. Grants.gov workplace makes it possible. So they saying right here is that reminder, federal agencies do not publish personal finance assistance uh, financial assistance opportunities on grants.gov, federal funding opportunities published on grants.gov are for organizations and entities supporting the development and management of government funded programs and projects. For more information about the personal financial assistance belief, please ben uh, visit benefits.gov. Now, the links in Descript when done. Okay. Hey, I love it. I love it. Training to start my company this summer. Let's do it. Um, well, one of the things uh, I can try to put, yeah, I'll put some of these links inside the description once this is over with so that you have it. But for right now, I do want to make sure I give this information since we're talking about grants. I will probably have to do a edit to kind of make this a part two for this episode and make it a different segment on, on YouTube. So one of the things here is that uh, when it comes to grants, you want to search for grants. All right. We're just going to search for grants right away. Now, this thing right here, it looks like a mess. It looks like it's back in, nine, I'll say, maybe the early 2000s type of uh, thing here. But when it comes to the keywords, we're just talking about housing. So we can search housing. And this one right here, they already tell you exactly what they want to give you. And they already talk about increase the supply of affordable housing through all site construction and pro housing reforms. And this grant is $4 million, right? The award ceiling is $500,000. The award floor, so that means the award floor, which is the minimum that they're going to give you, is $150,000. So that means there is no reason, like, why not to try to apply for this thing? Now, they already tell you who's the eligible people. When you're looking for grants, you want to make sure you read the whole thing before you even bother to apply for it. Because you want to make sure that the goals that you have in mind align with the goals for the company. If they don't align, then that's a problem. Then more than likely, it's going to be hard for them to either give it to you. Now, the question there's also a possibility that you might just be the only person that apply, which means that you might just get it. It's almost like how we do the um, looking for funding to go back to school. Like you might be the only person that applied, so they got to get rid of the money. So there you go. Now, the reason why you don't hear these things advertised is because the government doesn't have an advertising budget. They are not supposed to advertise. So you have to look for the money. And there's, as you saw, it's billions of dollars out there. You just have to apply for them. Now, these also were posted uh, June, last updated on June, and they expire. The closing date is August 1st. So at the time of this recording, like you have about, you know, a week to put your package together before you submit. So the one thing is that you want to make sure that you submit in your package is that you want to have a picture of it. You want to have an idea of it. There's a whole list of things. I don't got time for it right now, but we can do that as a whole nother show. So let me know if that's something that you're interested in. Just type in grants inside the chat and I can do a more deep dive into that on like what your package should look like, how to submit for one and all that fun stuff through grants.gov. 
Now let's see what else other grants out here. Are you guys getting this information from grants? Y'all like this? All right. So, and again, for when it comes to grants, you don't have to pay this money back. You just got to show how you use the money. That's it. It's not like you're doing that much. This is another one, you guys. So this one is called Inkfile. Inkfile.com. This is for the entre entrepreneurs. I was trying to find this. So I was looking for this earlier. So this one right here is called Empowering, uh, Empowering Entrepreneurship, Powering People. Okay. So this one, is, I would say highly recommend if you guys are interested in it. Um, I highly recommend this one. And I'm going to put this in the chat right now. So A, I don't forget. B, I'll have it. Because with this particular uh, program, but it's okay. Uh, the future is about to get brighter for two deserving up and coming entrepreneurs. And it might just be you. Your ideas, your drive, and your dedication could earn you an Ink File scholarship or grant. With the funds, you need to learn more and more to achieve your dreams and business ownership. So this is not just a grant. This is actually a partnership, okay? Um, see what you said here, Marcus. Uh, you said, I capitalized back in the day and minority veteran, I landed a few grants and government contracts for my freight brokerage business. That is amazing, dude. Man. Yeah, you got to have that. Uh, you might have you on the show to kind of talk about that. Because this is, I mean, this information is out there. It's just how many people are really taking advantage of it. And as we all saw, that only 31,000 small no 38,000 small businesses only taking advantage of this i mean this is crazy hey this guy actually got a similar haircut like me but i got a full beard though i think i it. mine is better um i'm not even sure what is he wearing with this like is it like a tube top like what is it got a towel on or something i can't make this out but it looks weird anyway uh scholarship grant Okay, so a Young Entrepreneur Scholarship Grant. Are you a student? This grant is for you. You've got big ideas, and we want to turn them into a reality. One young scholar with entrepreneur spirit will receive $2,500 to continue their education. What could you do right now in your business with $2,500? Think about that. So the, they have three deadlines here. So it seems like this is a cycle, which means that they might do this every year. So you might need to check this site, even though you might not, might not be ready today, you might know somebody that might be interested right now or have a business or they're a student right now in college and they wanna just kinda get some extra money to start their business. This is the way to go. You can start a nonprofit using the resources from the government for free, they will willing to teach you for free on how to start your business, how to fund your business, how to structure your business, all for free from the government. And to start a nonprofit, you only need $250, honestly, to get that started. If you want to do a nonprofit, if you want to do a for-profit, you can just start it like right now. They just asking you for an idea. You don't even need to even have anything written. Like, just say, hey, if my idea is this, and I plan on doing it. But they actually, you know what? Not me tell you. Let's read what they say that they want. They say right here, you must have a high school, I mean, you must be a high school senior, an undergraduate, graduate, or trade school student. You must be, you mustn't attend, uh, you must attend a U.S.-based high school, trade school, or university must hold a GPA of 3.0 or higher, must have interest in starting a business. Just an interest to start a business. You don't even need to hold, have the thing in it at all. It's great. Let me blow this up a little bit bigger. Like, it's, it's crazy. So people just giving away money. Now, how to apply. Complete an online application, create a short two-minute video telling us how entrepreneurship will impact your life. You don't even, you just need to have the idea. Again, 
They are paying you for the idea. Like, this is crazy. Submit a sample business plan. It can be a crappy one, which means that your sample business plan doesn't have to be amazing. They walk you through it. It's all right. Fresh start business grant. Okay. Are you an aspiring entrepreneur looking to start to grow your business? This grant is for you. Whether you're starting over or starting from scratch, Inkfile wants to help you. Okay. One adult entrepreneur will receive $2,500 to put towards their startup costs and will receive free uh, formation services from Inkfile. So they're already going to teach you how to format your business and give you money. They're going to pay you <laughs> to start your business. This is great. Okay. I never, I wish I had known about this when I started. So they already got the deadlines for March, June, uh, June 30th, which I already passed. And they have one coming up in September 30th. So uh, these recipients are receiving so much money. Okay. They already talking about the requirements. You just need to be 21 years or older. U.S. resident and planning to start a business to grow an existing business in a significant way. Like, you know, this is crazy. Okay. Like $2,500. I've started this podcast less than $2,500. All the equipment that I have in here right now costs about $2,500. Yeah. Cause my lamps, this microphone, the mic stand, my rollcaster, um, you know, Stuff you see behind me, some of this alcohol is part of the process. All of it, okay? Some of these books that I got that I was reading, this is all part of the process. Some of the resources uh, for entrepreneurship and the books that I was reading to do well with my business all cost under $2,500. So this is amazing. And if you want to cheat, cheating meaning copy and pasting, they already got people who already won the prior ones, just click on their profile and see what they have. And even if you have questions, just go to grant at incfile.com. Okay. Like this information, I can give it away for free all day because it doesn't hurt me none. This is the beauty. I'm here for you. Okay. Um, now there's another one. I have so many things on here. Um, oh, I do like this one. This other grant one that I was looking at, this one only takes uh, like two minutes to fill out. Okay, this is going to be the last one, and then I'll I'll cut the show because I just want to make sure you guys have all this information because you asked about it, and I want to make sure I deliver. This one here is called Jobber Grants, okay? So you go Jobber, J-O-B-B-E-R.com. Straightforward. All right. So what they're talking about here, they say they recognize excellence in home service. So uh, they say here, we want to spotlight your work through our $150,000 grant program built to recognize excellent in small business, uh, small home service businesses. Applications for job or grants 2023 are now closed. Uh, want to learn about the future grant opportunities, sign up for the latest job or grant news. So you can just sign up, put your email in, just get notified. But it seems like this is an annual thing. So at $150,000 in grants that they have to give away, they just have $150,000 just to give, give away money. Okay. They are awarding 25,000, I mean, 25 grants uh, to be awarded. So if you take, let me get my little calculator here. Do some rough math, which is 150,000 divided by 25. You're getting six Gs. $6,000 is still a lot, okay? It's free money. Why not do both? You can do Java grants and um, Inc. file grants at the same time because they don't talk to each other. You can get all this money for that one business idea, okay? Spotlighting home services, recognizing for important work you do. Applications are now closed, blah, blah. So we know that. So what they looking for? Home service uh, heroes who keep our homes and offices safe and running smoothly. 
They're looking for career builders, career builders who help uh, hardworking people build meaningful careers, looking for smooth operators, smooth operators who run smooth businesses, I mean, business for themselves and their customers and community caretakers who give back to communities that they live. All right. So how to use the grant, it's up to you. So pretty much you just decide on what you want to use it for. Uh, They say you have the freedom to choose how you want to use the grant and support your business goals. Use the funds to help launch, grow, or strengthen your business. So that means that if you never even started your business, you can go to this website. But if you plan to grow your business, you can use it as well. For new equipment, you know, like I said, the lighting, uh, marketing dollars, that stuff is expensive to market your business, uh, to launching a new service or even team training. You got, uh, you've got you got plan- big plans and we want to help you make them happen, okay? This is what they say. And they even got, again, cheat, copy and paste, okay? I mean, it's not cheating. We are copying off the right cats, if that makes sense, okay? Be a copycat, but copy off the right cats. And these apparently are the right cats, okay? Talk about testimonials, and they already talk about the program timeline. So if it's March 1st through June 8th, phase one applicants, you take five minutes to fill out the application and tell us about your business. So you mean to tell me back, let's say March, earlier this year, it seemed like March is about a good time frame for all this stuff. If you want to get money, you got to start looking early, okay? Go to these websites, put it on your calendar to say, hey, I need, like I said, remember we were talking about training, not trying, to train for these businesses and to train to be a great entrepreneur. You need to make sure that you be true to the regimen. It's already laid out here. Just make it happen. Okay. Say, if I receive the grant, do I have to pay it, pay it back? Nope. You don't have to pay it back. It's not a loan. And they already give the money up away anyway. Who is eligible for these grants? Any home service business owner or aspiring business owner, 18 years or older, residing in the U.S. and Canada, except Quebec. So if they say any home service business owner, you know what that means? That means if you clean houses, you can get it. If you say if you inspect houses, you want to start your business to inspect houses. They, I had an inspection done. I paid about $550 for the guy to come out with some fancy tool to get some stuff, right? Ask him how much the fancy tool costs. He was like, oh, it's about $1,000. And I was like, huh, interesting. If it only costs $1,000, this grant is giving you six Gs. So that means you can buy that. Plus, and I was like, well, how much is that ladder that you're using? Oh, he was like, oh, this ladder costs about like $500. So I was like, 1500 bucks. All he had to do was just do two houses. And he's paying for that already. Now, the other thing that was cool that he used was a heat ray gun. I so want one. It was an infrared gun. But he said that one costs about 10 Gs. However, as we just saw, you can apply for multiple grants here. So you're doing a home service business. So say if you're even just looking at, um, oh, they even tell you right here, what is a home service business? <laughs> A home service business provide a one-time or reoccurring install, repair, maintenance, or mobile services to clients at residential or commercial properties. Some service businesses do not include businesses that run out of home residents. So that means that you can't have something that's in that home. So here are some of the examples that includes landscaping, residential and commercial cleaning, contracting, painting, HVAC, plumbing, pool maintenance, mobile car detailing, etc. So you mean to tell me if you want to go out here and start cleaning out trash receptacles, you can get this grant. If you're going by painting numbers on the curb for people, they can say it's for an emergency purpose. 
you can actually qualify for this grant. I actually thought about doing that. It was like just running around painting numbers on people's uh, curbs and stuff like that and make it with the reflective paint. It does seem pretty cool. You can do that. And to kick it off, they say home based or retail businesses that primarily provide or sell goods or services online for home or from brick and mortar locations are not uh, eligible. So you can't sell goods and services online. So like you have to actually, oh, from home. So you can't have it as a home business. Like you can't just do it out of your house. Um, so this is going to be interesting how they going to rotate that. But either way, you can get started with this. And I would say that um, you have to really train to hone your craft know your business. And I think the next phase of this, what I want to do is do a deep dive into grant writing. However, I want to make sure that this is something that you guys want. I don't want this season to be something that I'm interested in. I want to make sure that it's something that's for you. So for that, you guys, I have to say it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to me for this long. We had fun. I enjoyed it and I love sharing this information. So if there's anything that you got out of this, please make sure if you haven't done so already, go ahead on and like, leave a comment and enjoy the rest of your day. Y'all have a good night. I'm out. Peace. Let me do my outro. We out of here.